Jim, you've just completed a report for ITIC on the importance of extending the 9% VAT rate. Just before we talk about that, what's your take at the moment about the global economy? Because obviously 2023 is looking like a, a, a challenging year on so many fronts. Uh, yes, it is, Owen. And I think to understand the environment we're moving into in 23, it's necessary to cast our minds back to this time last year. We were just starting to emerge from the pandemic we were starting to see, you know, uh, economic activity rebounding strongly. That had given rise to um, a surge in inflation, a strong demand met limited supply. But the expectation was this time last year that as 22 progressed, as supply started to come back on stream, as demand started to level off after the initial rebound, that inflationary pressures would ease as the year progressed and that central banks wouldn't have to do very much in terms of tightening interest rates. And then, of course, on February 24th, when Putin invaded Ukraine, um, the whole thing changed quite dramatically. And the, I mean, that war has had many impacts, but from an economic perspective, um, I think the impact on energy, food and industrial metals and materials has been very significant. And we've seen um, global inflation really take off over the last 12 months. And, you know, there was a little bit of an easing in November, December, largely on the back of falling oil and natural gas prices. Yeah. But basically, we're looking at the highest rates of inflation in 40 years in yeah. many jurisdictions. And, 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 and high, yeah. high inflation means high interest rates effectively, doesn't it? Yes. Um, I mean, initially, central bankers believed that the inflation thing was going to be transitory and they wouldn't have to do much with interest rates. But as the year progressed, central banks view changed significantly. And we saw um, the Federal Reserve in the United States increase interest rates by four and a half percent during the year. We saw the European Central Bank take rates from zero to two and a half percent between the end of July and the middle of December. Um, and likewise, the Bank of England. So we're we're getting this combination now of high inflation, rising interest rates, and naturally that is having a significant impact on global economic activity. Um, I have never, or at least rarely, seen such a level of uncertainty about the global economic outlook as we see at the moment, and that's largely because a lot of what happens in 2023 will be determined by what happens with the Ukrainian situation. And I yeah. guess the safest assumption to make at this juncture is that this war is just going to rumble on for the foreseeable future. So it will continue to have all sorts of impacts on global economic activity. So if you combine that sort of geopolitical uncertainty with elevated rates of inflation, with rising interest rates, you know, 2023 is going to be a challenging year for the global economy. And I was looking at sort of consensus forecasts recently for professional forecasters around the world. Um, and most are anticipating recession in Europe and certainly the United Kingdom in 2023. A little bit less certainty about the United States. Uh, but uh, and of course, China is in significant trouble at the moment because, you know, a construction and property boom has burst there over the last couple of years. And of course, COVID having and continues to have a significant impact on activity yeah. in what is the world's second largest economy. So in a nutshell, Owen, I think the first half of 2023 at least will be very, very challenging. There's lots of headwinds there at the moment. Yeah. So I think safe to say one of the most difficult global economic environments we faced into since 2008-9 yeah. And uh, your podcast, The Other Hand with Chris Johns, which I really enjoy and, and I'd highly recommend, you do actually talk there quite positively about the Irish economy compared to maybe some of our global peers. We're, we're not in bad shape domestically at home, are we? No, we're not. I mean, and, and one of the amazing things in 2022 was the fact that we saw all these global headwinds blow, um, starting to get stronger and stronger and yet the Irish economy remained incredibly resilient. Um, the public finances, very, very strong, you know, tax revenue buoyancy, particularly on the corporation tax side, yeah. which you'd be a little bit worried about how permanent it is. But but also the income tax take was very, very strong. Um, so tax revenue is very good. And that enabled a very expansionary budget on September 27th, 11.3 billion 
was yeah. injected into the economy in that budget without having to resort to borrowing. And in fact, we ran a budget surplus last year of just over five billion. The export side of the economy doing incredibly well. Um, and chemical and pharma accounts for 65 percent of our merchandise exports. And that sector has been performing very strongly since the beginning of COVID. And that continues to be the case. But even indigenous export sectors like agri-food also had a good year in 22. Yeah. Um, and of course, the I, I guess the strongest part of the economy, and it, it, it's really a reflection on everything else that's going on, has been the labour market performance. Yeah. You know, we saw record levels of employment being achieved um, in September of last year, just over two and a half million people have worked the highest yeah. level ever. The unemployment rate ended the year at 4.4% of the labour force, at least in November. Yeah. And indeed, for many businesses, particularly in your sector, in tourism and hospitality, um, the retention and recruitment of staff was a huge challenge yeah, during because we're we're, we're 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 virtually at full employment, aren't we? So there, there's there's we no, are. there's no cushion really out there um to draw on. No, there's there's not, and I mean, um, and and, and it, we're, Ireland is not unique in that regard because um, many global economies actually businesses, particularly in hospitality and tourism are finding it incredibly difficult to recruit and retain staff and costs are rising significantly yeah. as a result of that. And the one thing we don't really know at a global level, and I've seen lots written and discussed about this, we don't know where the labour has gone. Yeah. You know, where are the people who pre prior to COVID worked in the hospitality sector? You know, yeah. They haven't disappeared. Yeah. Uh, but, 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 but it does create a challenging environment for the yeah. tourism and hospitality sector there's no yeah, doubt and, about that yeah and, and looking specifically at the irish tourism and hospitality industry as you say it's a, it's a challenging time i mean 2022 the recovery was stronger than anticipated we we we, we think we got about 73 percent of, of 2019 levels which was fabulous considering where we were this time last year but lots of concern and apprehension about this year. You know, you mentioned the economic woes of, in our key source markets, uh, interest rates, inflation, uh, the cost of business. But one of the issues coming down the track at us is that February 28th um, cliff edge where both the temporary business energy support scheme is due to expire, but also the VAT rate, the 9% VAT rate is due to increase. And just looking at the VAT rate, Jim, and, and, and in, in reference to your, the report you've recently done, what were the sort of the, the key kind of takeouts from it? Well, I, I, I think going back and looking at that global backdrop I've, I've spoken about, I mean, if, if the UK, the United States and the euro area slow significantly over the coming months, which is highly likely, that is obviously going to impact on tourism flows out of those areas. And those three areas are incredibly important for the Irish tourism product. Um, domestically, we're seeing... Um, rising interest rates, we're seeing cost of living pressures. Yeah. And, you know, when the uh, electricity and gas bills arrive over the coming weeks, um, it is going to take have a serious hit on household disposable incomes. So in, in a nutshell, I think the macroeconomic environment for the tourism and hospitality sector as we move into 2023 is very uncertain and is very, very challenging in my view. And if you think about, you know, tourism, um, it's an incredibly important part of the economy, particularly for the indigenous economic activity and more particularly for regional and rural economic growth and employment. Tourism is really, really important. Um, at the end of September, um, it is estimated that there was 170,000 people working in accommodation and food services. And then if you extrapolate that into the broader tourism sector, um, I estimate that there's over 246,000 yeah. people employed in tourism. So it's and as I said, a lot of that employment is in rural and regional areas where there's not a lot yeah. going on in terms of economic activity. So it's it's an incredibly important part of the indigenous economic base. And I'm not saying this because I'm doing an interview with you, the head of ITIC, but um, you know, I've I've always argued tourism and indeed the agri-food sector are the two most important yeah. indigenous sectors of the economy and yeah. they need to be protected to the yeah. greatest extent possible. So, 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 so why yeah. why why on earth would the government therefore be looking to impose a 50% hike on the applicable VAT rate? 
Well, uh, you know, a, a very good question. Um, and if you if you think about that economic macroeconomic environment I've described, it means that consumers are going to be under more pressure. They will yeah. have less disposable income to spend. So if the VAT rate was increased by 50% on the 28th of February, which is what it, what is planned, taking it up from 9% to 13.5%, um, that would represent a 50% increase in the rate. And I estimate it would add just over 4% to the cost of accommodation and food services, assuming that increase in the VAT rate would be passed on to the yeah. consumer. And I think it would have to be because yeah. with margins under so much pressure in tourism and hospitality businesses, there's no way they yeah. could absorb that tax increase into their margins, into their own businesses without doing yeah. serious damage. So to me, given all of the uncertainties, given all of the pressures on the sector and given the importance of the sector, it makes no sense whatsoever to me to yeah. increase that VAT rate. Yeah. Um, I think it would just do further damage to a sector that is going to have a more challenging year than yeah. we've seen for some and, time. And it would, would it also, I mean, if, if it adds 4.1% to, if you like, inflationary costs within the sector, you would you would think, therefore, it would damage demand so is it going to also have an impact in your view on employment will will will, will businesses struggle to maintain or 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 retain employment numbers yes i i i think it's it's inevitable and um it's it's not solely down to the increase in the vat rate i mean if if you look at many businesses in the hospitality sector they are typically well almost exclusively SMEs, you know, they're yeah. small or medium sized businesses. Um, they are already under significant pressure. I mean, energy costs, staff costs, other costs of doing business have increased dramatically in the last 12 months. Yeah. And indeed, I've seen over the last couple of weeks, and this is something that um, I would have been predicting last year, that in the first six months of this year, particularly the first quarter, I fear you could see a lot of hospitality businesses going out of business. And yeah. indeed, in my local area here in Dublin, I know three restaurants mm. that have either shut down or are going to shut down over the last couple of months. Um, and, and and that is that's that symbolizes really yeah. or reflects the pressure on businesses like that at the moment. Yeah. And the energy thing is absolutely huge. And despite government efforts to try and subsidize energy costs you know it's not enough it's not working yeah. and i think inevitably those businesses a lot of them will go they're under pressure and if you superimpose on top of that an increase in the vat rate of that magnitude i just think it would do further yeah. untold damage to the sector so yeah. i'd be unapologetic about this um and i know within the department of finance and the department of public expansion reform they do not like the reduced VAT rate. And indeed, many of my peers in the economics business don't like it because, you know, they don't they don't like tax incentives for anything. Yeah. But I but I but I do believe a nine percent VAT rate is the appropriate VAT rate, not just at the moment, I think indefinitely for the tourism sector. And if you compare our VAT rate to our international peers, we're well up the league table. You know, yeah. so so, so yeah. from a whole range of different perspectives, to me, it would be absolutely nuts to yeah. increase the VAT rate. Yeah, the and and it's um, you know, you know, there are, there are controllables and there are uncontrollables. So so Michael McGrath, the new minister for finance, can't do anything about the Ukraine war, or can't do anything about you know, can't do much about the global e economy, but domestically he can make decisions. And one of the decisions within his gift is whether to increase that VAT rate at the end of February or leave it at 9%. Um, ab absolutely. That is the, a decision that the minister will ultimately have to make. And as I say, I think the advice he will be getting from his department is to allow it to go up to 13.5% as planned. Um, I think he's got to stand up to that. Um, and, and if you think about you know, from a purely political perspective, you know, he represents a constituency in Cork where tourism is an incredibly important part of the local economy, particularly, I know he doesn't represent West Cork, but particularly yeah. the, the western part of County Cork is just incredibly dependent. So I would say the real politic of this 
would suggest that Michael McGrath should make a decision and I hope he does make a decision to postpone. I would like to see it indefinitely, but at least to the end of 2023, postpone that proposed increase in the VAT rate. Um, I would like to see a 9% VAT rate actually becoming permanently yeah. embedded in the tax system. Yeah, and indeed, IBEC have said something similar, and I think uh, it was PwC or one of the big um, um, auditing and accountancy firms said something similar. So you're not alone in that regard, Jim. And certainly all, all of us in the tourism industry think that it should be kept at nine for a whole variety of reasons. If nothing else, competitiveness, as you mentioned, you know, the VAT rate and all the all the big European nations is 9% and less. So if we go up to 13.5%, we immediately lose competitiveness, which is, which is daft and such a volume periods. Yes, it is. I mean, competitiveness is always important for an economy or a sector, particularly a sector like tourism, because if you think about tourism, um, it's a sort of a voluntary activity in the sense that we as tourists, we make a decision where yeah. we're going to spend our money, where we go on holidays. And if we see um, the price environment deteriorating, we make different decisions. OK, so that's in normal times. And yeah. now, if you think about the times we're in at the moment, where global economic activity is under significant pressure, global tourism will be down in 2023. I think there's no doubt about that. So yeah. in against that sort of backdrop, you know, doing something, making a concrete decision to increase a VAT rate, to further deteriorate the competitiveness of the tourism product, doesn't make any economic sense whatsoever. Yeah. And I mean, I, I would fear that, you know, and it's not solely down to the VAT rate, but that would compound the problem. But I would see at least 10% of employment in the tourism sector being incredibly vulnerable at the moment. Yeah. That would equate to over 24,000 jobs. And I stress again that many of those jobs are located in rural and regional economies where there's yeah. not a lot else going on. Yeah. So it, it to me, it just does not make any sense. And then if you think of the broader picture here, you know, the multinational part of our economy is incredibly important. It supports direct employment. It supports a lot of indirect employment. But one of the things we're seeing in the global FDI market at the moment is global technology is under significant pressure. Yeah. And um, there's about 100,000 people employed in technology companies supported by the IDA. And inevitably, some of those jobs will be lost over the next 12 months. We've seen um, Salesforce, Amazon, a number of big multinationals announce global job layoffs. We're not sure yet how that will impact on their Irish workforces. But if you yeah. think about FDI employment coming under pressure, that yeah. increased the imperative to protect the indigenous employment as well. So yeah. uh, there's just so many compelling arguments at the moment as to why it would make no sense whatsoever to increase the VAT rate. Yeah. Well, listen, let's hope uh, Minister uh, Michael McGrath and, and Tisha Cleo Varadkar and the rest of the cabinet are listening. Jim, thank you so much for the time. We might check in again maybe mid-summer just to have another sort of economic uh, a reality check and uh, by that stage we'll know the, the situation on the VAT as well I'd be um, absolutely delighted to own and I'd, I'd just like to wish all of your members um, that the most prosperous possible year um, in what will be a challenging environment so let's hope government plays its part in actually facilitating um, a decent performance in, the, in what is an incredibly important sector Super, many thanks Jim You're welcome Owen